All right, guys, have to go back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And Clayce's frustrations are only continuing to mount after failing to qualify for the challenge of the leak to former teammate proceeding in pretty devastating fashion. He indicated initially that he might just step away and chalk it up for the rest of the season. But then going on to say that the subliners, despite potentially having offers for him on the table, are still refusing to sell or loan. Very much agree to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Really upset the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one. Of course, Modern Warfare 2, that's going to be the game coming out in a couple of months' time. A few months' time, I suppose, at this point. Did want to ask the question, really, what's going to happen to the likes of Scraps, Waskin? Like, these guys, I'm sure, still have a fair few fans. Now, um, of course, if you guys have been following for a few years back in Modern Warfare, pretty good players on the London Royal Ravens, right? They came top four at Champs that season, but there was a lot of drama about the team and the players on the team and the fact that they were often, like, chalking scrims for Warzone and stuff, and Adam Assault had a few words to say. There was some good, you know, classic cold drama back in the day on that front. Now, of course, uh, the last couple of years, they've been out of the league, really. Really, like scraps of course was there where they were about last year but the last 12 months or so they've pretty much just been doing content and stuff like that but I know these guys have kind of indicated they want to get back to some degree into the competitive side of things so I wonder what they'll do next time around because back in Modern Warfare right of course well they were pretty good in that game so I wonder if they're thinking with Modern Warfare 2022 coming out whether that could be a good target for them to try and get back into the scene so look if expansion does come along like um, that's I'm sure going to help them a fair bit but I wouldn't be putting money on expansion right now because I feel like if it was going to happen this year we might have heard a bit more about it by now now, because I'm, I mean, surely invest in stuff we want to get involved. So, interesting time in college, there's no doubt. Wanted to talk about this as well, because of course, we're discussing challenges today. Now, this comes out from the rotation. Obviously, look, it's expected that players in challenges are going to say the prize pool isn't enough. So, 90% of them also think there's not enough money in the prize pool, which I mean, is it fairly understandable, right? Because you want more money at the end of the day. But um, there was also some talk about the format, right? The frustrations that some of these players have. Like, um, Clayster initially, when he went down there, said that, like, um, he enjoyed it a lot more than the pro circuit, just because you're playing Call of Duty all the time. Like, um, it's very, you know, high tempo, you're playing a lot of stuff. But I feel like for a lot of players, that gets out quite a lot quite quickly because there's way more challenger stuff going on, there's way more tourneys than there is in the pro circuit. I feel like um, for a lot of players, it's actually like every single weekend, effectively, you're playing matches, right? You're playing important stuff, which is good on one side, but um, I think it can be a bit frustrating. And actually, none of the players that are interviewed here actually, um, well, gave it a five out of five for enjoyment, right? The maximum was four. Most people give it a two, which is, um, you know, pretty tough, right? If, if your players and challengers aren't enjoying the circuit, aren't a fan of the format, it's really not a great sign for the longevity of the challenges ecosystem right so i know there's been a lot of talk from even like at the cdl side right hex has said that um, he's kind of ready to do an optic academy when the cdl actually steps up and supports challenges the way uh, they think it should be supported right i'm sure a lot of the players would have great feedback on what they would like to see done but um, whether that feedback actually reaches the eyes and ears of the cdl is another question entirely because we're now a couple of years into this thing now and, um, and still we're not really seeing much progress in terms of what the players actually want to see and uh, what the enjoyment of these players in challenges and the consistency of the progression, I suppose, from one rank to another. Now, well, this is what Clayster has to say, right? Because he's now gone down there, right? Of, of course, after being on the subliners earlier this season, there was a lot of talk about the fact that if, um, let's say, they went to the Prime Classic, the subliners, and they had a tough time with Crim6, Clayster even indicated that he reckoned he was getting another shot in that team. But of course, they wanted to win the entire thing. So they kind of, uh, well, put that did in the water. And now Clay's been down there in challenges. He's trying to get another spot. He's on, obviously, a pretty big contract from the subliners. His buyout, I'm sure, is pretty hefty. But he has indicated, and I'm pretty sure it would be possible for them to do a loan arrangement where they basically just loan him to another team. They take over his salary for the rest of the year and then Clay can play out uh, what, the rest of the season on another organisation. Now, seemingly, they don't want to do that. We'll see that in a second here. And as Clay describes, really frustrating. I'm going to miss three majors this season and champs as well. Just want the opportunity to play. Socks not even getting a chance with a fresh environment or team. So, interesting stuff because it doesn't really indicate here whether he's not getting an opportunity because teams don't want to give him a chance or whether it's because the subliners don't want to effectively let him go to another team because he has indicated before that he did have many offers on the table and of the teams that are remaining here it's possible that some of them might be looking at Clayster right now but it seems like he just can't go to those teams due to well various factors we might see here in a second but of course additionally as he says you know we ride elite qualifiers today let's go so like that's the thing in challenges I'm sure like Clayster's getting used to it at this point every single weekend there's something going on a cup elite qualifiers the elite matches themselves or you know whatever might be happening there's a lot going on in the challenges world so qualifiers for the elite 
which is effectively from well it runs alongside the regular pro league and it's effectively the, the top eight teams from Europe and North America playing effectively a pro circuit type thing but of course for the amateur side so qualifying for this is kind of like step one really to proving you're one of the best teams in North America and I'm all in Europe of course as well and pretty much all the best teams generally qualify for this especially in Europe because a lot of the time in Europe the teams are more consistent don't change too often but um, you know we definitely saw some surprises in the North American one yesterday one of which being Pristini and the boys coming back into business so Pristini after um, he subbed in briefly the phase when they I think lost to Optic I guess it was back in I think the stage two qualifiers or whatever like um, I mean after that he said initially okay I want to come back into competing I want to get back to business because he won a world championship with Simper BZ Asties and Clayster back in Black Ops 4 on the United team you guys might remember since then he's been a pretty solid player like on Seattle Surge and stuff like that but um, yeah nothing crazy right and he's always like a very fast aggressive player that can run a couple of different roles in an aggressive manner and could be actually a massive benefit to a team in this game and he said look I want to come back I want to do something and I'm, I'm kind of surprised that teams aren't looking at him in more detail but it's rather possible that at Florida Mutineers for example right now doing their trials will at least give this guy a go because I feel like him and Vivid would be a, probably one of the most aggressive SMG duos you're ever going to find in Call of Duty history to be honest now well as Pristini says initially I suppose getting some excuses out there Tawny Day will being the sickest I've been in a long time going through it right now chest and throat burning so bad more and more with every cough so it's not like I've been you know smoking cigs like for 40 plus years so yeah saying he's not particularly healthy and that's yeah never taken a legitimate day of my life gotta let it know that if I lose today it's absolute BS right so these guys having a good time but um yeah Pristini saying look I wasn't even feeling particularly well today like I'm um, well sick as I've been in a long time he reckons and still took down Clayster so Clay and the guys got reverse swept twice in like I don't know I guess there's winners and losers not exactly sure when this series was but this is a qualification series I'm guessing it was losers so I think they got reverse swept in the winner side then got reverse swept in the loser side to Pristini and Clay and the guys fell out and Pristini and his team went through two challenges and the fact of the matter is that it was actually such a brutal reverse sweep because both reverse sweeps ended in game five round 11 so for whatever reason the ice factor for Clay's team just simply was not there I think they won a couple of game five round 11s or maybe a single one or maybe it was Doug's team the one it's um, back at the kind of what the chances of it alongside Toronto but as he says yeah he got reverse swept twice lost round 11 game five both times like um yeah super frustrating for Clay understandably when you're losing that fashion you're up 2-0 in both series to have a great chance of qualifying you then get reverse swept in both situations that's just honestly devastating and as Clay says soon after is chalk it up right so the immediate indication was that he's like so frustrated with this because initially when he went down to changes he was um, seemingly having a good time but I feel like it does take a toll on players we saw last year with methods he went down there and was uh, having a frustrating time and he didn't really have that many great results despite then coming into Boston this season with TJ Halley as well who was also kind of struggling to a degree in changes and then having great results right so definitely a very different environment different ecosystem for sure and um and yeah Clay's like maybe chalk it up right maybe I'll just call it off for this season it's getting fairly frustrating didn't qualify for the elite again is it even worth him going through the time of grinding challenges if he's not going to get a spot in the pro league like um yeah it's difficult to say but he maybe feels like he needs to just grind out the rest of the season try and do something at challenges champs for example and then um, he might have a better chance next year of getting picked up to a starting team because his initial well what he's been saying for a couple of weeks now if he doesn't get picked up to a starting team then um you know next season then he's going to call it off and end his career effectively and as he says you know we fight vanguard does my head in sometimes so backtracking and saying look okay i was just getting in my head a little bit like we're still going to keep going we're still going to keep plowing on throwing to the wolves again come back leading the pack you guys know how it is and as spot says his team as well all about the bounce backs yeah they're going to plow forwards as well but as clay says trying really hard not to lose full but this is by far the lowest point in my career i've ever been at don't even know what to do anymore so yeah definitely frustrating to hear from clay star but uh, this is what luna his like significant other says if only you weren't being held hostage now clay's reply of course like you know he to the moment i suppose understandable frustrations given the situation but still the held hostage comment right here is interesting just because i'll share a clip from clay's stream there was music in the background i'll have to cut it out so the audio quality might not be the greatest but effectively he talks about the fact that he's only got a couple of months left on his new york subline as contracts they could loan him out to another team who could take over that salary but uh, for whatever reason they're not doing that right still indicating possibly that uh, there's offers on the table here that Clayster is being denied by the subliners management and um, of course well held hostage certainly implies that i don't really know the situation bro so i don't know i don't know if new york's asking money from me or if people just don't want to pay my salary or it is, whatever it is bro it's like I'm only under contract for now. Where is so. Columbus? So we know that Clay is under contract till the end of the season. They could potentially loan him. He said this back in April now. Saves New York and whatever new team money, right? Because they wouldn't have to pay the buyout and New York gains money as well. And Clay could go elsewhere. So why subliners don't really want to do this? I mean, we talked, of course, about a couple of days ago now that, um, that Optic might well let Prolute go effectively, right? And say, okay, look, if Prolute, if he gets an offer for another team, like, uh, you know, you're free to walk effectively. Thanks for your service to the team. Kind of like a, that's a very hex optic type thing to do. Other organizations don't operate in that manner. 
and I'm, I, yeah, look at Clayson and think, okay, you know, he's an asset on the books. Like, let's just try and maximize him as much as we possibly can. But in fairness, right, if you don't loan him out to another team, then I mean, you're losing your know, potential salary that you, of course, are giving away to him right now. So you could basically write that off the books, right, if you were to loan him out. If there are offers on the table, but then you've also got to think of your subliners, like if you loan him out to one of these teams, they could then, of course, well, beat you at champs or like it will do a good job to stop you getting the world championship spots. But right now it's probably talked for them anyway, right? So you've got to wonder. But anyway, these are kind of the three key teams that I would be surprised if they don't make roster moves during this period. Los Angeles Grillers, Florida Mutineers, of course, we know are already planning to get rid of Dave Paddy and bring someone else in. And then Boston Breach as well. If they stick it out, fair play, but I'm, I'd kind of be surprised if they do because I feel like right now the trajectory they are on, they're going to have a really hard time making champs. They just don't have the talent, I think. But um, of course, that's the question. Like, who do you actually get the talent for? Because how does Clayster fit into any of these teams? I feel like he doesn't really fit into Boston. Method should be a mainstay there. Florida Mutineers already have too many ARs and then it's like gorillas do you want to get rid of slasher right is that the plan or are we having clay and slasher on the ARs and getting rid of gunless I don't really know what you're thinking there right but maybe these are the options I'm not really sure what other teams are looking to make moves because Minnesota Rocker we did talk about there like clay and attach kind of teaming up once again but I feel like the more aggressive style they've gone for has worked out for Rocker so far so I don't really see how clay can fit into these spots he did say a while ago that offers were on the table and that kind of what he's implied now is potentially they still are right but for whatever reason the subliner is holding him hostage not allowing him to potentially join one of these teams if they want him right but it's kind of difficult to say exactly where he'd slot in so in Twitter you respect for all this stuff in the comment section below and that's the thing who knows what happens next year as I kind of pentagram says next year we run it up on well whatever's going to be happening there because he hasn't got his chance of course on the sub bench for the Los Angeles Thieves and he might be thinking he's in a similar situation to a guy like Sib who's been sitting on the bench for phase the last couple of years and has now got his chance and of course won an event of becoming the one of the best players in the entire game now we'll look at who actually qualified here for the elite in both regions the North American Champions Elite went to these at well, eight teams, but one team that qualified was D1 Gaming, a Latin American team that moved over to North America to play in these qualifiers and actually qualified. So this is an unbelievable commitment from these guys. Like, super happy for them, right? Like, incredible to actually do this, to, like, effectively just pack up shop, leave where you're from, go to North America to play in this qualifier. I'm pretty sure that's what they plan to do here. That's what I'm pretty sure that's what they did, and they qualified anyway for the Elite. So this is remarkable stuff. But yeah, these are the Stage 4 teams. Scrappy & Co., that's the Ultra North American Academy, as you might well expect. Major Maniac Neptune are the guys that won the Toronto Chance events. Venom's team. This is, um, of course, the Stallions roster. Doug St. Martin, unfortunately, did not make it. He's a land player. You know, we all know it. Pristini and the guys, Royalty Diamond Con Classic. They made it right. They took down the Clayser squads, which I'm going to almost, of course, made it as well. Assault's team. That's the squad we just looked at, right? The Latin American guys. With Sucre and Co. Then Pentagram's team as well. God of Expand at Fame also made it. The European side looked like this. So this is interesting because, I mean, there's look, there's two Sucre's, right? There's a Spanish Sucre and then there's like a Latin American Sucre that are now both qualified. But yeah, that's the Rocker Academy, the Ultra Academy Europe also qualified right here. War, I really like the look of this team, actually. This team War squad has been here for a little bit of time now. But, you know, with Harry back on this team, that's an exciting one. And then, yeah, these are the other squads as well that qualify for that region. So, like, interesting stuff. I thought this is kind of funny from Crone, actually, as well. Massive congrats to these guys. But, yeah, are North America and Europe losing their control in COD Esports? Next, not disputed, right? So, yeah, maybe AQ Pack taking over. Latin America taking over as well. But definitely very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below on this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Tell us your YouTube guys. This is a good video. I just like you should see it as well. And upgrade the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next time. Dale! 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 Dale!